You close your eyes, smiling as Mariah gets close to you. Yeah! yeah there it is. Hey guys, and welcome to GT Not Live, where we are back cooking up our friends in Cooking Companions. Uh, let's see, so last time, we got through most of the Champette's origin stories. Uh, we saw a little bit of Selena's angle, we saw a little bit of Oleg's angle, and when we last left things off, we had done a couple of image manipulation things to see like, ooh, there are spooky faces in the background. Um, but today, we are here to wrap up kind of the, the rest of the endings of Cooking Companions here. So first off, we've got a Bolex ending, which is bread. Uh, we weren't able to kind of go through his route and see what he contributes to the story. And then also, based on my research, there is more here. Uh, there's, there's other kind of endings as you go deeper. So we get through kind of Chompette's origin story, play through nightmare mode, and after nightmare mode, you unlock... I, sorry, I love the fact that there's, you know spooky voices and whispers coming at me from the screen. It's, it's, it's delightful. I, nothing, nothing like spooky Portuguese voices attacking me from the television. Uh, so anyway, uh, long story short, we are, we got through a lot of Cooking Companions DLC. We are not through it all, and that is what we're hopping into today, is to kind of see what other little details, things that we can find buried in here, um, in anticipation of the game theory that you know, might go up in between uploads of us doing this. So this is me researching, but based on release schedule, the game theory might go up. Uh, who knows, though? I, I don't know if all of this is actually going to make it into the eventual game theory. Uh, I think, as far as I've read, the one ending that we're trying to get today is something that's kind of disconnected from everything. It's almost almost like an alternate universe angle of things. So, so we'll see how things go. So without any further ado, um, you know, let's let's just hop into it, I guess. Right? Let's Let's go! There's Mariah peeking out, saying hi! Man, love this. I love how happy this title screen is, and just how sad and depressing this actual game is. Alright, new game. We're going to start with Champette's Origin. Uh, so this time we're just getting Bolex ending. Quick reminder, uh, this is, you know, Selena's cabbage, Bolex bread, Oleg is uh, onion, we play as Reina, who is raspberry, and we're being chased by a serial killer, uh, the Butcher of Zakopane, who is very, you know, even though we are being chased by a serial killer and we're hiding out for our lives in the middle of this cabin in the woods, all of us are very casual about it. Like, look at how happy she is. Hey! Hi! We're running for our lives! It doesn't matter. This is not the way that I would approach the situation. <laughs> hey! Hey! Rhino, we're up here! Hopefully that serial killer that's on our tail doesn't find us! We're all good! Thanks. Thanks, guys. Uh, check it out! A cabin all the way out here. What about the psychopath? We lost him a few kilometers ago. So, again, we did a playthrough of this. I don't want to repeat all this, but basically, hey, sun setting, let's take shelter. Think it's a good idea? Of course! Front door has a few ways to unlock it. Keep him at bay. Hope there's some snacks in there! Hope we don't get slaughtered by the guy that we're doing a murder investigation on. So everyone goes inside. Yeah, and again, they're like, oh, there's some locks on the door. That's good. But what about the windows? Did you lock the door? All set. Could you see him out the window? No, he probably went back to town. Is anyone here? No, he yelled and stomped around. Nothing. Hmm. This cabin's abandoned. Let's stay here tonight. What? Relax. It's going to be freezing outside tonight, so it's either him or us. Let's avoid making a fire. Don't want him to see us in the distance. No, 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 fire. There's blankets in the bedroom. We'll be fine, Oleg. This cabin chills me to the bones. We'll need them. Hmm. Whenever Bolek gets nervous, he tells a joke to break the tension. Got one of Razael's classics for you. What do you call a snowman's kids? Children. Oh. <laughs> hey. Again. Amazing. Let's split up and search the cabin. See if you can find any food. I'll take the bedroom. Leave the living room to me. Ryan, I'll search the kitchen. No need to help me. You sure? Of course. I know exactly where to look first. I got the Zakopane Junior Baker Award, remember? Selena. <laughs> Alright, everyone. Let's move out! Okay, so uh, just recap. Oleg finds chicken bones under the floor. 
Uh, we find a spooky note over there. We also find what appears to be, I, I did some research after, the, or no, you actually found it last time, um, which was that it's mustard gas, a recipe for mustard gas in the other room, which I've been thinking about. And like, to me, I it has to do with, like, I'm assuming it has to do with, I, I, I think last time I postulated, oh, it's like a World War One, World War Two thing, but... I'm not so sure. The dates don't line up. It seems like the World Wars would have happened after the events of this game. So still not 100% sure why mustard gas would fit into this whole thing. Unless it's just a like joke around mustard gas because they're all food. <laughs> but ching you don't, you don't just randomly drop in lore for a joke. Get out of here. Ash, it looked like you were going to say something. Nope. Great. Awesome. Meanwhile... <laughs> Thank you for that contribution. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, over in Selena's land, they uh, find the knife, uh, which we can then pick up, but then it does nothing in the final like confrontation against the butcher. Uh, we also find another secret note, so all sorts of good stuff. Um, the well, while I'm while I'm stopped here and catching people up, also to catch you up, uh, if you like my shirt, merch is available right below this video. Uh, new GT Live merch. Uh, as well as Game Theory merch. It's uh, book bags, backpacks, playing cards. We also got some great deals on some old stuff uh, from like our Conspiracy Theory collection, uh, which was all like Alien-themed and X-Files-themed. So that's all available right below, either in the top line of the description or in the merch shelf. So check it out, because I think I think this shirt is great. Um, all right, so, so that was Selena. That was Oleg, what they found last time. Let's choose to help out Bolek. So Bolek, we don't know what he finds. Hopefully Bolick will tell you another joke. Hey, Rhina. Pretty weird stuff in here. Weird walking stick. Jar of liquid on the bookshelf. Nothing edible. What about that? What about that yarn? You think I'm eating sewing supplies? Hell no, Bolick. Exactly. What about some shoes? How would you cook shoes? Boil them, duh. Do I look like a shoe-eating guy? Mom says I'm a growing boy. Growing only in one direction. Taller, because he's, he seems fairly prepubescent. <laughs> I feel like he has a lot more height to add to his general build. Haha, <laughs> Bolek. What area do you want to search first? So, uh, you know, we were inspired actually to do a food theory on this game because of the, you know, we did a cannibalism stuff. But uh, it was about uh, whether you could actually eat your shoes, and the fact of the matter is you can't. Uh, try as you might. There's a world where if your shoes were like you know, an unstained, untanned leather that fit like X, Y, like a lot of very specific criteria. You could eat it safely because it's not toxic, but even still, like the amount of effort it would go through to cook it wouldn't be worth the calories that you're actually ingesting. So eating a shoe, you know, maybe it gives you something to chew on to distract you from your hunger, but yeah, you're not, it's not, not a great plan. Let's just say that. So let's, uh, let's explore. Let's explore the walls. What's with this painting? Lightning blast during a severe th thunderstorm? Good for the crops. <laughs> Bolek. <laughs> oh, Bolek. You see this note nailed to the wall? You read it. What feud? The author sounds like an old man. Right? <laughs> I, I like that they don't, they don't tell you it at all. They're like, oh yeah, that note on the wall that you will clearly read. <laughs> the feud, sure. Uh, did we see a, a note in a previous, like, in the main game gameplay? All right, I'll have to look that one up before the final theory. Um, so I'll, I'll catch up on that one. What's up with the walking stick? We're in the mountains. Everyone needs a walking stick. The bottom of the walking stick is smeared with ash and plant resin. Like, cooking? Cooking in a pot? Disgusting! A ash and plant resin. It's smeared with you! How, how'd you get on that walking? Can you explain? Why, why are you, Ash, on a walking stick in, a, in, a, in Baba Yaga's cabin? You know, Matt, I'm going I'm to tell you something a little, a little wild. Okay, tell me something a little saucy. Yeah. Okay. So, Ash is, is dropping their secrets right now. As long as there has been fire, mm -hmm. there's been me. Whoa! No way. Yeah. Wow. You have I've, always... I thought I, I thought I conjured you out of my mind. Yeah, you you did. But I don't think you realize the power that your brain has. Wow, really? You manifested something retroactively. Back to the past? Back to the past. 
that's in past. That's uncanny. Yeah. So in this one moment of me manifesting you, yeah. I've affected all of history. Yeah. So when Rome, so what happened when Rome originally burned? When Nero Rome burned Rome, did it just like burn and then there was no ash, no remnant? Nothing? Yeah. It was it just was, like, it disappeared? Yeah, it was just kind of like charred and kind of crusty. Mm, but no ash. No ash. There was no ash. No. Until, you know, 2021. Yeah. Okay. So I think I think there's something you need to realize about yourself here. Man, I, I'm, I'm pretty incredible. The walls. There's a jar of mystery liquid on the bookshelf. I'll give you a 30 zot zloty zloty 30 robux 30, 30 robux, robux. To, yeah i'll give you 30 robux to drink in bolek <laughs> what make it 50 <laughs> gotta buy gotta buy extra lives in the door somehow uh, sure drink up bolek brings it to his nose before immediately putting it back on the bookshelf it smells awful and there's stuff floating in it you don't need to drink it bolek Unless you want to make 60 Robux. Heck no. Drink the jar of mystery liquid. I'm going to save the game. Because this seems like a terrible idea. But I'm going to say yes. Strange Flex. <laughs> we got the achievement Strange Flex. That's awesome. Rhino, what if that's poison? You open it up and sniff it. it smells like... Pickle juice. Oh! Hand it over then! I love pickles! You just said it smelled gross. Right? I know. I'm not giving you 60 Robux for drinking pickle juice, Bolek. But, but, but. There's a foam on top. No way of telling how long this has been out. That's bad. Yeah, that's bad. And, and if food is foaming, usually not a good, usually not great. Am I boring you? No. I just... Ash is yawning heavily over there. I, I gagged so hard I yawned. Or how hot the jar got. Right. You put the pickle jar, pickle juice back on the bookshelf. Uh, check the walls again. Huh? You see the outline of a trap door below the left window. Really? That's new. Bolek? There's a trap door here. Whoa, good eyes, Rhina. My nails are nubs. Can you get the edges? Nubs. Got it. It's a very shallow hidden compartment. Bummer. Looks like there's a note here. Ugh! What do we got? Hi, stop pretending like you aren't f home. I was good. I did a good job. Please tell me what I'm doing wrong. Teach me the secret. Just gonna store that one under the floorboards. You take the bad job letter with you. <laughs> yeah, that was his job application. Bull, like, take a look at this. Did a toddler write this? I don't think so. Keep checking the walls. Nothing else along the walls. No. Bookshelf. There's nothing interesting on the bookshelf. No point in reading today. Look at the books at the top shelf. There's a variety of wilderness books up here. Anything good, Rhina? Cooking off the land, foraging guides, skinning, taxidermy. Stuff that might be useful if we were stuck here a while. How long's a while? With a leg, few hours tops. Ha <laughs> ha! You check the books on the middle shelves. There's a variety of crafting books up here. Anything good, Rhina? Carpentry for subterranean structural support. Metal working for cages. Tailoring bandit. Wow. Oh, I mean, oh. <laughs> tailoring bandages for amputation. Like, honestly, <coughs> gotta, gotta call out the fact that Baba Yaga, she's, she's a self-made woman. Like, carpentry for subterranean structural support. She is self-taught. Back when Baba Yaga was doing this, there weren't, weren't no master class. She wasn't learning streaming from Ninja, my friends. She wasn't learning cooking companions from, from, uh, shoot, I, Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> like, chef, 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 it's going in real time. You know, there wasn't, there wasn't no, uh, none of that stuff. There weren't YouTube tutorials. She was reading the books. Also, Carpentry for Subterranean Structural Support reminds me of, um, Better Call Saul. Uh... Or, or Breaking Bad, where they build an entire underground bunker, like an underground basement, for, like, the drug cartel, basically. So I just imagine this elderly woman spirit, Baba Yaga, with her, like, ash stick, digging out a literal bomb shelter underneath their building. <laughs> Let's break bad, Baba Yaga. I am the one who knocks on the basement door. Bullock reads a few titles. Ugh. Whomever owns these is creepy as heck. Thankfully, they aren't here anymore. But they'll be back. You check the books on the bottom shelves. 
Really boring books down here. Yikes! Anything good down there, Rhino? Polek. If you need books to put you to sleep, this is a gold mine. Whoa! Like tips on breathing exercises? Counting sheep? No, Bolak. Got a classic Razael for you. What did the mommy cow say to the baby cow? I give up. It's past your bed. That made me sad. That one wasn't bad, Bolak. It was. Bookshelf. There isn't any time to waste reading books. It's time to check on Selena. Okay. I think we've looked everywhere, Bolak. Let's see what Selena and Oleg have found. Sounds good. You reconvene with the other two. Okay. You first met Bolick in the fourth year of elementary school. <laughs> Fade up on a boy mid munch of his wiener. I just imagine the stage directions for this moment in the planning document. And fade up, Bolick munching on his wiener schnitzel. It's great. Uh, you mind if I sit here for lunch today? I know it stinks to be new. Of course. Bolek, right? Yeah, and you're... Rhina. Nice to meet you, Rhina. Same. How's class going? Boys in math class are being jerks. Casimirez? Yeah. He's a loser. In third grade, he pooped himself while singing in a choir concert. Everyone around him was gagging. Wow, we are... We are divulging a lot of secrets about cast members today, aren't we? But Selena and I were laughing so hard at that. Huh. <laughs> Selena? Yeah, she's out sick today, but we've been friends since we were babies. I'll have to introduce you to Oleg. He's a class lower than us, but he's hilarious. Sounds good. Got a joke for you. Bullock always liked telling jokes that Raziel taught him. He laughed politely, quickly becoming friends. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. R Rhine, are you alright? Yeah, uh... Why is the chessboard turned sideways? Huh? Maybe someone was playing by themselves? This cabinet is pretty big for just one person. Maybe there was more at one point? Maybe. Rhina, uh, aren't you dying of heat in that coat? Not now, this living room is cold as heck. Ha! <laughs> There's a big blue blanket on the couch, maybe Selena would like that one. No, I'm good, Rhina, give it to Oleg! You can have it, Selena! Nah. I tried to be diplomatic. <laughs> There's two beds in here with blankets and sheets. Awesome. Do, do you want to take one of them, Rhina? Now nah, let Oleg and Selena have it. Where are you sleeping then? I'll take the floor. The floor? Yeah, plenty of practice from home. Practice? Yeah, beds were our grandparents at beds were for our grandparents at home. But one of my grandpas the jerk faked being sick just to sleep in all the time. Apparently, Rhina was a Charlie, Charlie Bucket from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, who faked being sick just to sleep in the bed all the time. One day, Mom brought back some ch- Wait. 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 Hold on. Hold- Sus! Sus. Where is he? Where is- Oh no! He's- <laughs> Go get him! Oh no! My phony! Sus! <laughs> Sus alert! Pew, 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 pew. This is it. This is gonna be the sus alert from now on. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> what? Cooking Companions is secretly connected to Charlie and the Chalk. Rhina! Rhina! Is Charlie Bucket's sister? What was that man's name? Was it Grandpa Joe? Grandpa Joe. Grandpa We're Joe. Grandpa Joe! One day mom brought back some chocolate. He leapt to his feet and started doing a dance just like Willy Wonka. That's Wong exactly himself. what he did. That is exactly what he did. That, I hate that man. He's such a villain. Such a villain. <laughs> you know, movie dumb's the worst con man. Oh, I'm so sick. I'm laying in a bed with three other elderly people in the middle of the room and you all have to eat cabbage water and... You know, I'm sick here. Uh-oh, I can't do anything. Wait a minute, I can go to a chocolate factory? Well, whoopity do! Let me click my heels. Get out of here, Grandpa Joe. Whoopity do! He does. He goes whoopity do and clicks his heels and sings his little song. I've got a golden ticket. You don't. You don't have an effing golden ticket, Grandpa Joe. You know whose golden ticket that is? Charlie's. That's Charlie's golden ticket. 
Maybe he should bring his hardworking mother in, huh? Who is slaving away to provide for all, what, four grandparents plus Charlie, five people in that household? Mm -hmm. Maybe she deserves a golden ticket, Grandpa Joe. Grandpa Joe? <laughs> Unacceptable. Selfish little man. Mm. I've got feelings about Grandpa Joe. Clearly you do. <sighs> Has there been a film theory on this? Uh, we've done a lot of film theories on Willy Wonka. I think I've mentioned it at some point. Okay. But I've never done a theory about how Grandpa Joe's a villain because it's just a fact. That's not even a film theory. That's a film fact. Film fact. That Grandpa Joe, waiting, biding his time, waiting for the family to come. And, oh, I've got the winning lottery tickets. Now I'm mir miraculously healed for the next 48 hours. And then I'll go back to living in the bed and being waited on hand and foot. This is me giving him the boot. This is the boot. That's messed up, Rhino. It is. Ha! Ah, don't sweat it, Rhino. I can sleep anywhere, so I'll sleep in the rocking chair. Only if you want, Bolek. Of course. Bolek. You and him leave the living room to meet up with the others. Okay. So I'm assuming... Okay, so let, real quick, let's un actually unpack the things that we just saw. Without me ranting about Grandpa Joe, because we've already more than unpacked that. Uh, the chessboard seems to indicate, again, the stuff that we largely knew... Oh, which is that Razael has been here. Um, that's why... Everything okay? Yeah, I'm looking for the dry erase marker. Okay, cool. So, basically, what this is reiterating is the fact that, like, Razael has been in the building, um, came before them, uh, seems to have made friends with the Baba Yaga. And again, like, this is a, div uh, a departure from our original theory, right? We thought Razael came after the main Chompettes, um, but it seems like Razael came first. And w did befriend the Baba Yaga in some way. Uh, so that's why they're playing chess together. That's why we're seeing, like, these things that, like, oh, it's a duo. I, the, the feud, the feud letter on the wall, I'm not 100% sure about. I, I need to refresh myself and look back at our original playthrough, at, like, the original main plot line, to see if you actually do read it. I know that there are hidden notes about the Butcher and court cases about like the butcher being brought to court and convicted of things. I don't remember anything about about a feud though. So we get this weird detail about a feud, we get this weird detail about mustard gas that seems to be lingering. And then additional hints that like Razael and the Baba Yaga bonded or became friends to some extent before the Baba Yaga eventually and presumably ate Razael. Okay, find anything, old toys in drawer. Toy boat on the couch. I like that Bolix. Like, I found this toy boat under a couch, even though we were watching him the entire time, and he didn't do that. Grandma made the boat for him. Razael was here. Okay, so we knew all this. The one and only. Yep. Can he still be alive? No. Okay, we gotta find him. Let's search the cabin. Okay, we're hiding now. We're looking. Let's move out. Okay. So, at this point... Okay. So, this is where we get the little Portuguese section which we have no idea what it translates to. I'm going to tell you something, Matt. Yeah. I actually went into Google Translate and yeah. translated that portion. Oh, yeah, please. Oh, my God. It's so sad. What? Oh, please. We, well, so here's the thing, right? From this point forward, we've seen everything for the Chompette's origin. So if you can find it, can you read it? Yeah. Let me pull up. Because um, I'm just going to catch us up to... Yeah. I'm going to catch us up to nightmare mode. Some folks in the comments... Um, Provided translations as well. So I'll pull up the full ones from there um, because of our lovely Portuguese fans. But I will tell you just like general gist of it. This kid um, was taken from her parents. Okay. And is trying to warn the other kids to run and not look back. Okay. And it's like, why aren't you listening to me? Um... But let me get the full translation. Yeah, give yeah, give us give us kind of what the translation of the spirit in the in the cabinet says. Yeah, totally. Because I'd love to know. There he is. There's the butcher. He's coming for us. We'll run down to the basement. So this is all stuff that we've covered multiple times now. Gonna have a couple flashbacks. All right. The voice says this. Yeah. This is from Twilight Vulpine or Vulpine. Um, apologies if I did not pronounce that correctly. The voice is this. Did she already leave the cabin? No? You're really in danger. Get out of this cursed place soon and never come back. 
She caught me and separated me from my parents, across all the ocean, and brought me here. She'll devour all of you. Flee. Get out. Okay, so that, real quick, that is, she brought me across the, that's weird that that's like a weird detail, but it does explain why they're speaking Portuguese when they're in Europe. Yes. So that's interesting, okay. And goes, haha, I don't speak Polish very well, but I should stop blabbering. Give this to his relatives that survived. And then that's when she gave the the picture that we saw. Okay. Um, I think this is goodbye. Our paths will probably never cross again. Hmm. Interesting. Huh. So that, uh, okay, so they do have an explanation then, uh, lightly, right, about why there would be Portuguese language here, which is, so the Baba Yaga just decided to, like, sail on a ship. <laughs> sail away! <laughs> you know, I'm going on vacation, but while I'm out here, I'm just going to take a random kid, bring him on back to the old cabin, show, up, show, him, show him the place. You know, why not? Um, oh, one other detail that I haven't called out yet, and I, I, again, this is something that maybe I should look up, um, is Rhina's coat. Like, they make this, they keep bringing up, and they keep making this big deal about the fact that she's got this big, heavy coat. Oh, yeah. And everyone's like, well, what, why did you wear such a heavy coat? It, it, it seems important to some extent, but I'm not sure why. All right, so there's Butcher dying. <laughs> really doesn't care. It just accepts her fate with big old, big old coat. Cooking companions. All right, so that was Bolex route. Um, la I think the most interesting thing to come out of that was the fact that, you know, it's connected. The, the lore is apparently connected to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Okay, so here's so here's everyone waking up. They're like, whoa, we're spirits now. Okay. For Raspberry, everyone's in denial. Oh no, were you holding Raziel hostage? I love the little, like, scary faces that just pop in every once in a while. They're, like, they're so kawaii, so cute, and then all of a sudden, ah, I'm alive. <laughs> Wah. Wah, I'm alive. Okay, so, at this point, I think to unlock the Mariah story, mm -hmm. it is go through nightmare mode, and then Correct. it just kind of, like, segues into it, right? Yes. Okay, so that's what we'll do. So, we'll also rush through nightmare mode. Like, again, we can kind of cut to where nightmare, like, nightmare mode ends and we start this new one, right? Cha-cha. Let's do that. Yeah. Cut. Cut. Ready? It's gonna be magic. Here's here's the sus alarm. Here he goes. Hey! So welcome back. Uh, we haven't actually started nightmare mode yet. <laughs> we just basically skipped the credits. Uh, Cause potato wakes us up again. I said, wake up. Cause we've had a potato interaction like this before. I'm assuming the others are causing you to become weak. We need to get you back to, back. We need to get you, I, I screwed this up the first time I read this too, get you back to normal. Less talking, less hesitation, especially, especially if someone's trying to become stronger than you. That used to make you upset, right? I'm keeping an eye on you. You ask for how long? At this rate? Never. You cough profusely, covering Potato in a fine mist. You're beyond disgusting. So then, are you ready to fight back against the nightmares? Punish the spirits that have made your life a living heck? So last time we did this choice, we said no, and then he disappeared. I think this time we say yes. Like, let's lean in. Perfect. Let us give them no quarter. Close your eyes again, and let's begin to traverse the abyss. You relax your muscles, getting ready for what's next. Massage. Ooh. Ooh, a little, a little potato bouncing Ooh. around on my, like, shoulders. Okay, nightmare mode. If you survive, you'll gain some insight. Okay, new game plus. Mostly a joke. Champet's Cabin Course. Thank you for getting this far. Thanks for playing. Okay. Oh, almost forgot. Nightmare Mode activated. You come to the bathroom. He's spooky. Okay. So now, I'm not going to do another fun transition. Now we're going to transition. Okay. So we got through Nightmare Mode. And we're given this. So this is... Okay. So now this is new territory, right? Uh, we have... This is wild. We have no title screen anymore. We just have this. This is cool. Nope. Extra is not an option. All right. Options. N nope. Load game? New game? <laughs> oh, no! Oh, boy! Yeah! Okay. Escape. Escape. 
It's the Spanish. The Spanish for escape. Karen. Wake up, sleepyhead. Karen? Karen isn't here. It sounds like she's whittling something again. Did she escape the basement? Karen? No reply. You head over to investigate. Uh, another trick by one of them. Who's still missing? Karen? Someone is tapping on the window. Spooky Ghost Anatoly! I can't get the taste out of my mouth! Are you done, Anatoly? <laughs> and yes. And fade away. They're getting more bold in their actions. You head to bed to sleep on it. Day 616. It's like an area code. 666. The Devil's Day. The four have returned to the first floor of the cabin. Wake up, sleepyhead. Karen? Come with me to the living room. Don't argue. You crawl out of bed to face them. Welcome. We've been waiting all day. Be satiated by this opportunity. Would you like to start the ritual? What ritual? A ritual to manifest alternative possibilities. Mistakes mended. Regrets unrooted. Let the others depart earlier than me. Let me survive this time. Oh, you get to let Mariah live. Okay, so this is so this is how it works. Okay, so it is an alternate universe where we get to like basically do the fan service of letting Mariah live because she never gets a chance in the original game. There's no way to save her. So she is always first. This means join hands with us and form this pact. This ritual is unlike anything you've ever heard of. And I'm the Baba Yaga. I've heard of a lot. Agreeing to the pact could result in horrors worse than death. Anger channeled and linked. Extremely dangerous. There might be no going back from this decision. Think carefully before making a decision. This might be a good time to save the... Okay. Might be a good time to save the game. Okay. Have you made a decision? You nod. Yeah, save Mariah, sure. Absolutely, let's see the alternate possibility. Wonderful. Take my hand. Take Karen's hand. You hold on to both their hands, ice cold to the touch. You've chosen correctly. I'm proud of you. See you soon. Your breathing begins to slow. The frost collects on the windows. One of your eyes rolls backwards, causing you to drool a little bit on the floor. One of your eyes. Hmm. Is it just that we have one eye, or something has gone horribly wrong? Oh, it's like my t-shirt. Quality merchandise. Available. <laughs> <laughs> Quality game theory merch. Uh, theory wear. Available right below this video. Same pattern. You too can see the spirits of the dead that you've consumed on this shirt. Anatoly picks the shortest stick first, leaving the cabin. Okay, Anatoly! Then Gregor goes. Then Karen. Anatoly. Gregor. Karen. Once the three are gone, it's just you alone with Mariah. <laughs> Thank you for getting me through all this. Mariah smiles. Eating the meat breaks most people, but not her. The storm clouds dissipate. The sun comes out again. Ah. So apparently, if we pick Mariah, <laughs> we affect the course of the weather. Because if I recall correctly, it is rainy and flooded the entirety of your initial playthrough up through, like, Karen's death. But no, here, if you pick the other guys first, it affects the course of the weather itself. It's amazing. I'm so happy the storm clouds have gone away. I, I, I couldn't have done this without you. Mariah's eyes widen, looking into yours. I... I want to stay here and take care of you. All my life I've been looking for my true calling, and it was you all along. No need to ask me the question again. I am here 75% of my own free will, 65% by compulsion. She answered correctly. So, this... yeah, that's the correct answer to the Baba Yaga's question. Which... <laughs> which is stupid! Okay, Baba Yaga? Th those those percentages don't add up. Baba Yaga skipped math class. I'm just saying. She answered it correctly. How did she know? I bet your arthritis is extremely bothersome. Do you want me to show you a special technique my grandmother taught me to help with the pain? You nod. Great. Sit down in the rocking chair and let me get to work. 
<laughs> she showed me the special technique. You sit down in your rocking chair watching intently as Mariah comes back with a towel and a bucket of water. I hope this is the start of a beautiful relationship, Tilda. Close your eyes. And is she going to kill me? She should. I bet you. I hope she does. I, I bet this is like, she's going to turn. You close your eyes, smiling as Mariah gets close to you. Yeah! yeah! There it is. Mariah throws you to the ground, sinking the knife into your chest. Yes! Yes! Oh! <gasps> it's finally over. No more victims. No more grieving parents. Your reign of terror is over. You're slowly bleeding out, but it's taking longer than expected. I'm going to tell everyone in Zakopane about what happened here. Once all the remains are recovered, I'm burning this hut to the ground. You try to get out a few words, but one lung has completely collapsed. Don't talk. Your hearing begins to fade in and out as you're losing consciousness. Unlike, I'm taking no chances. Going to watch you die in front of... Unlike, unlike, I'm taking no chance. So unlike someone else, I'm taking... So someone else tried to kill the Baba Yaga and failed because they took the chance. And so now Mariah's going to watch die in front of me. Huh. Who's that in reference? That's really interesting right there. That's a key. That's key. Then Ash. Hey. <laughs> hey, hey. What's good? Yeah, then Ash what? What, what are you going to do? Then Ash. Well, I'll let Mariah explain. Okay. Your body finally gives out. A stain removed off the earth. A storm cloud lifts off every, every town. Unlike, who tried to take me out? I'm so curious. After the events of the in the Tatras Mountains, Mariah embraces her destiny. The lessons of the cabin would break most people, but Mariah uses it to become a stronger person. After burying Anatoly, Gregor, and Karen, she worked with the Polish government, Polish, Zakopane, a government to eventually return home to Ukraine. There were Ukrainian refugees going to Poland. Sorry about that. Uh, apologies to the entirety of uh, Europe uh, for that one. <laughs> <laughs> all of, of the Baltic states, Europe in general, uh, really anywhere that touches or comes close to the proximity of the Mediterranean Sea, across the board. Uh, in April of 1945, Mariah is settled, selected to attend a conference in San Francisco. She, she's picked over Dmitry Manulski to represent Ukraine in the first meeting of the United Nations. Let's go, Mariah. Girl power, girl boss. Elected to the first committee, she helped create the preamble in Chapter 1 at the UN. Years later, <laughs> she would go on to form a committee to investigate atypical beings. Using the cabin as a blueprint, countries around the world begin to document the numerous abnormalities impacting everything from death rates to food prices. Oh my gosh, this is wild. This is a wild AU. She just did everything. She, right? <laughs> Who knew? She survived and did everything. And did it all. She slaughtered all the supernatural beings. No more Slenderman. No more haunted animatronics. No more, you know, uh, creepy clowns living in sewers like you see in, in uh, It. They're all gone because of Mariah. This one decision. The committee's investiga investigations reveal that many historical events were swayed either directly or indirectly by these atypical beings. G gone is the Mandela catalog because all the alternates just wiped clean from the face of the earth. The back rooms, no more. Mariah smashes down the walls of the back with her sledgehammer of justice and power and truth. Mariah smashes through the walls of the back rooms. Gone. Everything gone. Mariah provided expert testimony for many of the trials that took place. The books, and she is the one who convicted Walter White. She is the one who smashed through the lies of Grandpa Joe. The books and notes found in the cabin gave helpful insight for prosecutory evidence efforts across the world. Wow, what an ending. Are the chompettes okay? When she reached 85 years old, Mariah became bedridden due to cancer. Oh. Oh. Surrounded by loved ones, she tells everyone in the room about the cabin. I miss them, Anatoly, Gregor, Karen, but I can leave this earth happy knowing I shared their memories with all of you. I'm sure Gregor would be laughing right now. On March 15th, <laughs> I like that this is down to the day. On March 15th, Mariah finally passed away due to complications. Surrounded by loved ones, her legacy is one of service and warmth. Cities become safe again. Children can explore freely. The world is now a better place from her actions. 
Ooh. But could the Chompettes pass on? Are they still in that drawer? Still in the drawer. No! Wow. Huh? Well, uh, she had one last thing to say for us at the end there. I, uh, again, P Portuguese friends uh, in, in the comments, please let us know if you understood what she said. Because I feel like it's probably relevant, right? Because that was her alternate ending, so I'm and that was her. So I'm wondering if there was like a... But hey, that's just an alternate universe. But hey, that's just the universe, an alternate universe. Thanks for watching. Um, they told us to load the game there. I'm, I'm curious... Let's go. Have you made a decision? Let's reject the offer. You wasted this opportunity. Run, Nick. You passed some sort of you passed some sort of test. What is what it the right decision? Was it the right decision though? You crawl back into bed, still shaking from the experience. The sheets are drenched in sweat. You catch something moving out of the corner of your eye. You roll out of bed. It feels like 3 a.m. Nothing is moving around the bedroom anymore. Just your imagination, you head to the basement. Is Karen still alive? It would seem like yes. The door is locked. Okay, so this is going back to... This is going back to where we were. Okay. Okay, so this is, this is all stuff that we've done. I'm assuming this is going to get us to... Filthy toilet. Sink isn't working. Rescue, here you go. Raspberry unlocks the bathroom door. Goodbye, wretch. It's time to end this, yeah, and then we just go down into the the basement. Huh! Whoops, this is that that is that is a that is not that is not it. There we go. Yeah, so this is just gonna take us down to fight Karen then, right? Okay, we get more Portuguese. That's... This game is purely fictitious. It cannot harm you in any way, shape, or form. This is new. You hold your breath. Okay, so there's more... Are the spirits below gonna trap, spring a trap on you? You continue downwards. Okay, so there's more Portuguese there. Something approaches. Here's the jumps here. This is a new person. That's a it's a different art style. It's a different jump scare. When you regain consciousness, you're further down the staircase. There's a note on my head. Don't get up before Saturday? You take the Saturday note with you. Was that always there? Rain has stopped. The pressure is intense. Your feet finally hit the solid ground. You can barely make out the outlines of the door frames. The area reminds me of an underground cave. You can make out a door at the end of this hallway. You have a bad feeling about opening it. Open it, yes. There's all the spirits. You're at the four doorways again. South. It feels warmer when you enter. You begin sweating more than normal. There's a door at the end of the hallway, but it's so hot that you feel like you're going to pass out. Slowly open the door and crack it inside. Vines cover the entire ground. <laughs> Making a cold sweat. We're going to go east. No, east is the ending. You strain your eyes to make out an outline of the door. Slowly open it. Yeah, that's that guy. You're lying in the four directions. East. It's time for this. You walk to the back to the basement steps. Karen finds me. And then we end this and then we kill her. Huh! So this is, I mean, there's... Uh, Cooking Companions is a very interesting game because there, there's a lot of different routes and orders to do things. That was very vicious. There's a lot of different ways to do things. Karen escapes down the hallway. You follow her to the room in the east. Turn on the light. Reap what you have sown. Mariah, Anatoly, Gregor, Karen. I'll never forget you. Great. Yay. 
Yeah, that's right. I, I'm not making that up. I don't remember that from my first playthrough. The the screen like glitching out like that and giving you the message and that new spirit. I don't remember that. I could be wrong. It's been a while since I played the played through it the first time. But this is a game where there's so many different routes through it and so many. Di it seems like so many different answers that you can give. Some affect things, some don't. You know, some trigger interesting events. Anyway, the long and short of it is. If you haven't checked out Cooking Companions, please do let me know if you see more to this. Um, you know, I think that there is definitely a theory in here about what we got right, what we got wrong. But I think there's other theory fodder in here. I don't know if it's enough to lead to, like, actual conclusions, right? You know, who tried to kill the Baba Yaga before that, that Mariah's talking about? Clearly it wasn't the Champettes. Clearly it wasn't... Uh, Potato, the Butcher of Zakopane. Did Razael try to kill me? Still, Razael, we have a better idea of what's going on with him, but, you know, it, it, he hasn't really fully been explained either. Um, you know, I don't know if they'll just leave it there, because you get a general sense, like, he was kidnapped by the Baba Yaga, maybe brought there by the Butcher, and then made to be friends. This is the, yeah, this is the Cuphead version. Which we've done, which is, which is, I like that one. Anyway, um, okay. So, so yeah, it's, Anyway, play the game for yourself. It's a, it's a great game. Uh, you know, Dear Dream Studios has done a really good job with this, so support them. It's totally worth it. Uh, but more so, let me know if you know of other Easter eggs or things that I've missed in the playthrough, because it really does seem like there's a lot of different ways that you can find different facets and nuggets in this game. Nugget! Different nuggets in the game. Um that give you different results. And I, you know, some of them are just more like fun, Easter eggy, goofy, but some of them might actually have lore importance. Uh, so give it a look. Uh, and again, like I walk away from this, it's great. You know, cooking pains. I think this is, it's a shame that people have slept on this one in a way that people didn't sleep on Doki Doki. Like, you know, Doki Doki was everywhere. I think this is just as good. Um, you know, it's different. It's it's good in different ways. I think the story actually is is more sinister. Um, and I, I like actually a lot of the characters a lot. Well, I like both games with the characters and stuff. But this is, I mean, this one's really good. And I think that it's, like I said, it's a shame that more people have not been exposed to it, played it, things like that. So experience it for yourself. Tell a friend to play it for the first time blind. See what they get themselves into. <laughs> It'll be a rude awakening for them. Um, and yeah, keep an eye out for Game Theory. It may have come out by the time this one uploads just based on how game theory and gt live go up but um who knows this might even prompt two theories we'll see so thank you guys so much for watching and as always remember it wasn't a live stream but it was a video a video for you eat well friends Bye.